Welcome to the Art New Wave Studios. I'm mixed media fusion artist John Creighton Peterson, and today I'm here to show you how to make this mixed media canvas using your favorite Sukuneko supplies. Let me show you how easy it is to use your favorite Sukuneko supplies to create your own mixed media pieces, including colored and stamped metal and embossed backgrounds to use on canvases. Before we create our canvas, we're going to make our focal point, which is made of a resin frame, a piece of aluminum metal, we're going to be coloring it with stays on inks, and in between each layer we're going to be putting stays on coat to set each color. Let me show you how simple it is to create this focal point of our canvas. We're going to begin by coloring our background of our metal piece and we're going to be using stays on in the cactus green and I'm going to use a sponge dauber just to pick up some color and I'm just going to begin putting this onto the metal. Perfect, there we have the cactus green covering the entire background and now I'm going to use my heat tool to set the cactus green. Once you've set the cactus green color with the heat tool you do want to allow the metal to cool down a little bit and I'm now going to take the stays on coat and I'm going to use a separate sponge dauber to apply the coats. What this does is this sets the color onto the metal so that we can layer additional colors on. And because this is metal, you can easily just slide the dauber back and forth. And the nice thing about the stays on coat is that it's already dry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our next color, which is midnight blue. And we're going to pick up some of the color with the sponge dauber and we're just going to start highlighting onto the metal. We don't want to cover everywhere, we just want to randomly add some color. Just like so. So I'm going to continue adding this on. And there is no right or wrong way to apply the color, you're just adding some background color onto here. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to heat set again. And allow this to dry for a moment. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the stays on coat. And I'm just going to apply a thin coat all across my metal. Perfect. Now we're going to add our last color, which is the ganache. Such a great brown color. And again, I'm just going to off stamp that a little bit to pick up some color. And I'm just going to begin adding some color onto here. So here is my metal piece with the ganache added to it. Now I'm going to heat set it real quick. Now I'm going to add my layer of stays on coat. And while that's drying really quick, I'm going to ink up my stays on metallic gold ink pad. And for doing this, you want to make sure that when you shake the ink, you can hear the little steel ball inside click. Just like that, that lets you know that your ink is all mixed up. And now I'm just going to ink the edge of my ink pad. I'm just going to put some of the ink onto the pad and just massage it in. I don't need a whole lot of ink for this because I'm only going to be stamping once. So there's that. And now I'm going to use this background stamp and I'm going to ink this just like so with the gold ink. And 
then I'm going to take my sheet metal piece and I'm going to place this directly down onto the stamp and press. The reason why I'm not stamping down onto the metal like you usually would is because the stamp can actually slip because it's inked up. So there is the metallic gold writing on my colored background. Now I'm just going to heat set this. Just like so. And then I'm going to put my final layer of the stays on coat onto my stamped metal background. Just like so. Look how beautiful that is. Now, now we're going to repeat the same process on our resin piece. We're going to begin with the cactus green. I'm going to pick up some of that color and I'm just going to start coloring my resin frame. And then I'm going to follow that with the stays on in the midnight blue and then finish with the ganache. And as always, I'm going to be putting a coat of stays on coat in between each color. The last touch onto my frame was that I added a little bit of the stays on and metallic gold to highlight parts of the frame. I've added some adhesive onto the back and all I'm going to do is take my metal piece. I'm just going to place that onto the frame. And there we have the centerpiece of our canvas. Now I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create your own mixed media canvas with your favorite Sukineko supplies. To begin creating our canvas, we're going to start adding some background images. This is just a printed scrapbook paper that I tore up into some pieces. And I'm just going to place these onto the canvas. And I already put a little adhesive onto the back. So you can use whatever adhesive you would like. There's the third one just like so. And now I'm going to use some Stason Studio Glaze and some metallic colors. This is the silver. And I'm just going to place this on here. And I'm just going to rub this with my finger, just kind of randomly onto here. And what this is going to do is this is going to give a coating onto the image, but it's also going to act as a sealant on the image as well. So we're going to do this on all three. So again, I'm just putting a very light coat onto here. There's the second one, and then here's the third one. So now you can see that silver metallic finish on the pictures. You can also add some gold if you'd like as well. So this is the gold. So again, I'm just going to put a couple little drops here and there. And the gold gives kind of an aged bronze kind of look onto here. So it's a cool look to kind of give your pictures a vintage look if you want. So if you like more gold, you can add more gold like I did down below here. Or you can add less. It's all a personal preference. And it's okay if you're going onto the canvas because we're going to be covering that up. To create the texture and background, we're going to use Radiant Neon Amplify in the white. And I'm just going to randomly squirt some of this out. And then I'm going to use a palette knife to just spread this wherever I would like. And notice I'm going over the picture a little bit here. That's okay. You can also use your finger for this if you want. And what you're trying to achieve is some really cool texture on the background. So it doesn't matter which way you go with this. Because in the end it's all going to be textured once we heat it. Amplify can be used for nice details if you want as well. Because it has the 
nice little pointed applicator for more precise applications. So again, I'm just going to kind of squirt this wherever. And because this does stay wet for a little bit, you do have a good working time with it as well. So don't feel rushed having to do this. So I'll just use my finger here. And this will have a different texture once we heat it, and you'll see that in a moment. And that's kind of the fun of working with the amplifier. And you can always build the texture up more if you want as well. I like to do the front of my canvas first, and then I'll concentrate on doing the sides. And I am overlapping the images a little bit, just to give it a little bit of contrast. So there's that. And now I'm going to heat the Amplify and I'll show you the magic. When I start heating the Amplify, it's going to start bubbling up and it's going to start adding some texture. So let me get a little of this going so I can show it to you a little bit better. And the texture is really going to start standing out once we start adding color onto it. So you can see here on this part of the canvas where the texture has been heated on the amplifier and right below it it's still wet. So there's no texture down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue heating the rest of my canvas so we can start adding some color. Now we're going to begin coloring our background with some of our favorite VersaFine Clair ink pads. And for this I like to use a brush because you can really get down in the nooks and crannies of the texture that we created with the Amplify. So what I'm going to do is just pick up some color with my brush and I'm just going to begin brushing this on. And I'm going to work my way around the canvas. And it's okay if you get onto the picture a little bit. That's totally fine because we are going for kind of a distressed look anyhow. So I'm just going to work my way around the canvas coloring in the Golden Meadow VersaFine Clair. Since the original paper I used has a little bit of blue and a little bit of teal and some brown in it, I've decided I'm going to use a little bit of the Warm Breeze to kind of highlight some of the texture as well. So again, I'm just going to pick some of this up and I'm just going to go right along the tops, just like so. See how it just starts pulling out that texture even more. So I'm going to continue working my way around the canvas, highlighting with the Warm Breeze color. Now that I pretty much have my background color set where I want to have it, I'm going to take this stencil and I'm now going to add a little bit more of the Amplify on here to add some more texture and kind of like highlight areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread a point on just like this and I'm just going to carefully spread this with my finger. Again, this doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're going for that kind of vintage antique look. And I'm just going to go through here on my canvas and just randomly add places where I want to highlight. Now that I've removed the stencil, I'm going to use my heat tool and I'm going to heat set my Amplify to make it embossed and give more texture. So here's the canvas with the stenciled Harlequin print put in here. And you can notice I have a few places like right here, for example, and in here where I don't have quite as much of the second layer of Amplify applied on here. So what I can do is I can just go back in with my Amplify and I can just add more. So don't be afraid to go back in here and add some more texture if you need, think you need some. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coloring these areas that we just used with the stencil with a couple more colors so they stand out. So the more texture 
pattern that you have in here, the better it's actually going to be. Now another thing too is that you don't have to have these to be perfectly shaped also. So don't become concerned if you have areas where the pattern isn't exact because you don't want that exact looked anyways. That kind of defeats the purpose of creating something antiqued. So I'm just going to go in here and kind of fill in a few more spots where I think I could use a little more Amplify. And then I'm going to reheat set it so that we can build more texture for adding our remaining colors. Now we can really see that texture in the background standing out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our stencil and we're going to place it back onto our pattern and line it up pretty close to how you had it before. Now we're going to start coloring our embossed diamond parts of our stencil pattern. And I'm going to take Shady Lane and again with my brush, I'm going to begin highlighting the white areas. Now this doesn't have to be exact and we can always go back in and touch it up so don't worry about that. The reason why I'm starting with the Shady Lane is that I really want these embossed diamond shapes to have a much darker, bolder color to them than the background so they're going to stand out more. To add more color and depth to the diamond pattern, I'm going to be using the Versafine Claire and the Acorn. And again, with my brush, I'm just going to pick up some of that color. And I'm just going to start adding this onto there. And to kind of give you an idea of the color, you can see how that's really starting to stand out. Because this acorn brown is a little bit darker, I am going to off brush it a little bit so it's not overpowering the green. But without the green on there, it would have a different look and color. So definitely want to make sure we have that. Now, perhaps my most favorite part of this whole project, we're going to add some metallic highlights with the Delicata and the Golden Glitz. So again, I'm just going to start picking some up with my brush. And I'm just going to start dabbing this on to my diamond patterns. If you notice, I'm not off brushing this. I don't need to because I really want to have that golden highlight in there. And the Delicata is great when you're working on darker colors as well because it does show up, which you'll see when I lift the stencil off here in a second to show you. So here you can see that rich metallic color that you don't have compared to the other places on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stencil back on here and continue working around and then I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to add some color around the Harlequin print that I missed with the stencil by hand with the Fantastic. Now that I've removed the stencil I'm just going to go back in by hand and I'm just going to lightly brush those white areas that we're left from the stencil and I'm just gonna finish those up really nicely. If you have a small little area that you can't quite, quite reach to, you can use a, a Fantastic and you can just go in by hand and do the same thing. Sometimes a little bit harder to reach the smaller areas with the larger brush if you're not used to working with those, but that just comes with a little bit of practice you can, using with the Fantastic, actually get a little bit deeper of color around it so you're highlighting around the Harlequin diamond print edges as well. Now that I've completed coloring the background and adding the texture, I've added some adhesive to the back of the centerpiece and I'm now going to place the frame right down into the middle of our canvas. And there we have a mixed media masterpiece created using your favorite Sukaneko supplies. For more ideas and inspiration using Sukaneko supplies, be sure to visit my website at artnewwave.com 
or follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Art New Wave.